Have you ever wondered how hackers can remotely control your PC from across the internet? The way they do is most likely a remote access Trojan or rat. Today we're going to cover a notorious rat known as Xenorat. We're going to see how it works and also how you can protect yourself. Nico knows tech, all your tech tips and reviews on deck. Nico knows tech, number one channel with the news on check. Remote access Trojans or rats are some of the most dangerous and scary viruses that you'll ever possibly come across or even hear about. They're the ones that are stuff of nightmares you hear on about in movies and spy movies and television. They're the most dramatic in my opinion. Well, we're going to be testing one that literally invites hackers onto our network. So on that note, I must give you a word of warning. If you're going to run these on your own computer, actually don't do that. Don't run them on your own virtual machines unless you're a malware researcher or someone very experienced because you're literally going to be inviting a hacker onto your network and that can be a very bad time. Anyway, let's get to it. All right, so the platform we're going to use to test this malware is any.run, which any of you guys can actually do for free. I have a bunch of paid options active on mine and you can choose those as you like. Anyway, let's get started. We're going to go ahead and start here. Right here on the front page, we have analyze URL, analyze files, and then this new feature I've just been notified about, it allows us to browse the internet safely. So you can browse the internet through any.run instead of browsing the internet on your own and maybe damaging your computer. So if you're concerned about malicious websites or you wanna go somewhere you probably think is infected and you wanna see what would happen, don't do it on your computer do it through any.run. So that's kind of a cool feature, which I'm gonna explore that in another video, cause I'm curious. But anyway, we're gonna go straight here. We have reports. If I wanted to grab a lot of uh, uh, malicious samples, this is what other people have submitted. They've done their own, own analysis as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and start a new one. So we can go right here. And here's where I select the operating system I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with Windows 10 64 bit. And I'm not going to need this much time, but I'm going to set it to my max. I'm not going to route through Tor. I'll go ahead and upload my rat right here from a sample that I have. And then I'm going to go ahead and run a public analysis. Now, what a public analysis is, the reason that this is free is because you don't own your analysis. When you submit a virus sample here that you found, uh, it's now owned by the public or by any.run. So we're going to go ahead and run it here. It's in a zip file, so I need to extract it. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the desktop so that we can run it. It's password protected for your protection and all of our protection. The password for most samples is the word infected, all lowercase. So I'm going to go ahead and extract that. It's now on the desktop and it's this file here. The person that submitted this sample also went a step uh, further to protect the viewer and renamed the last extension .bin. I'm going to go ahead and remove that and leave it as an exe and now it'll function. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on it and I'm going to be watching things on the right here as well as connections, DNS requests, and then of course threats. Threats will be things that Suricata or other parts of any.run have detected. So detected as a virus or a threat or a hacker. We're going to see it all here. So I'm going to run it. It's right here. And we see our CPU usage going up just a tiny bit. Give it a second. Okay, there we go. It's already, the first thing it did was it added a firewall to allow a program it allowed this program to communicate on the internet, which it's already starting to do some communications. Let's check connections out. Yep, we got some outgoing IPs, especially this one here. Looks like it's communicating out to Japan. And we already have a bunch of threats coming up through Suricata. Yep, we have a lot of malware activity. Now this is not, this is not to be uh, not, not surprising since remote access Trojans are very promiscuous. They're very loud and noisy. Um, as far as computer programs go, they create a lot of activity, they create a lot of damage, and they break a lot of rules as far as cybersecurity rules. So a lot of times you'll see the first thing they do is they start hitting away and, uh, and bypassing your security. And the first thing it did was it allowed the program through the firewall, which this is why I don't use Windows Firewall, I use a third party. And then we have some connections going out. 
Now we have a ton. Oh dear. So this is what makes these rats uh, so dramatic is that this one doesn't even need a physical hacker at the computer. It's communicating to what's called a CNC server or a command and control server. So it's communicating out to the internet and there's an automated server that's been programmed to remote control this machine to do tasks. The most common tasks of a, of a command and control server for this would be to steal from you, steal personal data, steal logins. If you're saving your logins to a Chrome or browsers, you don't have it secure in a vault they're all gone at this point those are that's a no-brainer every hacker goes for that and every every trojan that's trying to steal from you that's valuable taking your social media accounts taking your steam accounts this is how people get their their tails hacked okay so we have a ton of exfiltration yep yeah. so host file exfiltration ton of okay so this one's been detected and it's not coming back as as uh, Xeno rat. It's actually coming up as uh, a Blada Bindi, which is a more promiscuous rat. So we got a lot going on. Communications. This is where you can see where it's communicating out to the internet. Where is the CNC server? I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume that it's one of these without a domain. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one here, and I'm gonna pull up another browser and go to who is IP. And there's a whole ways you can search IPs. This one's one of my favorites. I'll go ahead and paste this IP. Let's see who this is communicating out to. Okay, it's Oregon, that's Microsoft, so this is nobody. Let's go back. Let's go try and find who these guys are talking to. This is multicast DNS. Okay, that looks okay. Ooh, -hoo, here we go. So this is has malicious reputation. And what's kind of sad is, is that this is a US IP address. So let's go back, we'll put in this IP address. All right, direct allocation. So we can tell who to complain about this IP address if you want. If you're an IT director and you want to help take down uh, malicious IPs, this way to go. So let's see where this is in Carson City, Nevada. So if this was an individual hacker, we would have an IP on them. But they, these are all IPs to the CNC server. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. Uh, NJ rat has been detected on this IP address. So this IP address is known to be associated with uh, with a CNC server so Very active threat and now now that it's working this computer is essentially remote controlled by a CNC server or a hacker Right now. I don't see any hacker activity right now. I'm gonna give it a couple minutes while we talk about this threat um, but the first thing it did was first that was us extracting and then immediately after I ran the executable here, it added a rule to the firewall allowing it to talk out. I wonder if we could see what port it talked out on. Okay, um, a lot of you ITs out there are probably uh, uh, laughing at this number port. So the port is over 42,000, it's 42443. To a normal user, it's going to look perfectly erroneous. Um, there's something a lot of old school IT say is if we, we block all high ports because there's nothing good happening on them. In this case, this port being extremely high, not a typically used port, it's only used by, I mean, a few things, mostly peer-to-peer, -peer, um, torrenting, and then ha hacking and CNC. Um, but it's looking like it's trying to look like 443 while not being. Okay. Right here, I can click on this, connects to CNC server. Yep. So some of the things that this thing could be doing right now is the CNC server definitely went after personal data. It's going to steal. It's going to try and be as unobtrusive or unnoticeable as possible. This, this virtual machine usually only uses 30% of the memory. Since we were running this rat and it's currently running, it's using an extra 5%. CPU usage, zero. But as soon as this CNC server attempts to make this thing uh, do anything, we would see more activity. But that's not enough for us to really tell uh, if there's a threat or not. And this is why you really need to not run stuff that you don't know what it is and obviously have a really good antivirus program. My recommendations, I did a whole 
tier list on, on my favorite antiviruses. Right now I'm recommending ESET, which I have a bunch of links in the description with discounts. I also did some videos on them. I'll put that in the description. Um, there's ESET Essential, um, there's Premium, and then there's Ultimate. All of them detect this kind of rat. They're very good at it. Even if it hasn't seen this exact signature, it will detect it um, because it has uh, machine learning and it's gonna detect that this kind of activity, all of this, this activity right here where it added this program, this, this command right here to allow this corrosion through it, that would have set off all kinds of flags. Also, it wouldn't work on ESET because it has its own firewall and you can't add rules through the command line like, like this virus did. This will work on Windows Defender, Windows firewall, it won't work on ESET. It's just that there's too many uh, securities protecting that from happening. So a question a lot of you guys give me is, what would I do if I suddenly was infected by a rat like this? Well, if I noticed that I had an infection like this and my antivirus failed to detect and quarantine it, I would immediately pull the machine offline. That's the first thing that I would do. I would probably also shut down the machine in fear that it could be something else such as ransomware, and I don't wanna to have to deal with uh, an encrypt and unencrypting all of my files, which, in many cases may not be possible. So the first thing that I would do is just power off the machine and disconnect it from the internet. Um, in hindsight, if I knew exactly what it was, I would disconnect it from the internet and then swiftly remove it. Uh, I would run my one of my uh, Tron script, which you can find a video for that up here and be done with it. But the first thing I would do is I would probably panic. I mean, it is a pretty scary situation. I'd be concerned about what was taken. I don't keep a whole lot of personal data on my workstations. They're off-site on uh, network attached storage that is protected by its own uh, login credentials and permissions. And then um, I don't keep a whole lot of personal data here either. I, I secure my passwords. So this kind of leads me on to how people get their accounts hacked. You see people on Facebook like, I've lost my Facebook, someone hacked in. Um, usually wasn't a hacker breaking your password. They stole it from your, your browser because you left them unencrypted. So you definitely want to use a, a password manager. There's Bitwarden, which is a free open source. It's arguably one of the best out there. Uh, ESET Premium and above uh, includes a password manager. Um, LastPass actually is not a recommendation. It has a bad reputation. There's been some breaches, and I think they're actually might be gone. But they're, if they're not gone, they're going away. So Bitwarden is a is a is a really great way to secure all of your passwords so that a virus like this can't steal them. They're encrypted. Um, and then a good antivirus such as ESET uh, would prevent this from happening. But as far as what I would do, yeah, I'd panic and pull the plug and make sure it can't communicate out. If the this particular virus, I'm not gonna say every type of virus, but this particular virus is, is completely harmless and useless when it's off the internet. However, it doesn't mean you should run it on your machine because if you infect your machine, uh, it will compromise your security. So next time you're online, you have problems. Um, but if you follow my removal video, if you have a, a, a rat like this, I have virus removal videos on my channel. They're the most popular ones on the channel. Uh, you can't miss them and that should take care of them. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you like it, smashing that like button is extremely helpful. Helps the algorithm, helps me reach more viewers like you. And if you like more content like this, smash the subscribe button and I will see you next time.